or ill will. Okay? Envy. <clears throat> now, when I, when I think about this stuff, my first thought process always goes to how my mindset is in the church. Okay? How I deal with you. Okay? And my other fellow believers. All right? That's first and foremost. Um, because why? Well, who was, who was he talking to? The Galatians. He, were ta- he was talking to fellow believers. He wasn't talking to sinners. Okay? These were Christians that he was talking to. And so why do we need to be reminded of these things? Well, because you are human and the old man will raise up. Your flesh will come back to you if you just give it some time. Uh, you quit praying, quit fasting, or quit going to church, quit doing music, worship music. That seed is in the ground, and every time you don't, every time you water that seed, you will get a harvest. Whatever you sow, you will reap. That is a an immutable law in Scripture. Okay, if if even sinners, if they sow good things. God will allow that, that, that seed to grow and, and reap good things, okay? The bad thing is they usually, they don't balance that thing out and they, or they usually just go overboard. They've done one thing one time and they think they're God on earth, you know? Mm-hmm. That's enough for God to forgive me and make I can make it to heaven. <clears throat> God's my judge. The thing is, yes, God is your judge and the judge makes the rules. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> so... You know, you need you you'd be better off if you thought I was your judge, but I'm not. God's your judge. So, if you say, "Hey," every time somebody says they're sinning, or you you say something to them, they say, "Well, God's my judge." Believe me, there'll come a time, there'll come a time when they have to face their Creator, and He says, "Remember this. This is evidence against you. This is this and that against you." Okay? Because He's not gonna forget, like. No, we would like a human would. Uh, amen. He's not going to forget. The only way he forgets is if we ask repentance for it. Then he throws it to the sea right. of forgetfulness and all that, and 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 you know, and all that stuff. But uh, enmity, all right, a mutual hatred or ill will. We talked about murder. Now all these, all this, in the church, all these things that we can go through, will eventually lead into all kinds of things. But one of the most pointed directions that it will lead us in is hating our brother or sister. Okay? If if I do something to you and, and say uh, in the church and, and there's this strife or enmity or whatever, jealousy, if those things aren't controlled and aren't put under the blood of Christ, and when I say that, I mean you're praying about it, you're, you're actively being sober-minded like we talked Sunday, being sober-minded, watching... Because all these things are, yes, they are coming from you. They are fruits of the flesh or can be from the flesh. This is what the flesh will produce. Y'all got that? The flesh produces these fruit. The spirit produces fruits from the spirit. Okay? And so what we want to do is to make, not have any fruit of the flesh and all of the fruit of the spirit. Okay, so all these things will leading will lead to you hating your brother or sister, and it will tear down the church. Yeah. This is where cliques. This is where uh, all these things come from. They just don't, you know. It, it starts off as, you know, well, uh, we all get together, we love each other, and we're a tight knit group, and it seems great. That's wonderful until other people come in. That's why I say we have to be a clique that includes, you know, that that's, that just grabs you and pulls you in. Now that's a good thing. But when we become our own thing, then when the person comes in and they they feel outside, y'all felt this before. You felt outside the group, right? You felt outside the group before, and I have too. All right? And because of that, I realize it's bad in in Scripture. And uh, and so what we need to do is we need to include people. And so, uh, but... All that that we have seen in the negativity in the church, and you can just go in your mind and think about it and all this stuff, it comes from the fruits of the flesh. Okay? Enmity. <clears throat> Strife. Um, it's a, it's a, a contention for uh, superiority. You know, it's who's going to be top dog? 
everybody that wants to lead is always up there saying, I want to lead, I want to lead, I want to lead. Well, usually those people just want the title. They don't want the responsibility. Because if you know what the responsibility is and you're sincere, you need God to help you stay. Look, I was an associate pastor. I did have spiritual pressure on me. I did. But uh, uh, it was something that I just got used to, you know, blah, blah, blah. I went through it, went through it. When I become a pastor, and this is not me being, um, I was being sober-minded. I could feel the pressure. And it was not twice as heavy as it was when I was associate pastor. It wasn't even in the same category. It was that much more pressure. And um, so uh, I'm just saying it, it, you know, way heavy on you. Um, But you can take that and you can let it go to your head. And that is your reward. Your pat on your own back. That's your reward. Okay. Uh, when you serve and you get into a place of authority or whatever, and some place some people are not called to be in the front. The body of Christ, is, it you know, it talks about there's some places that they say more honorable. It depends on what what script what uh, verse you read. But like my hands, I don't have to cover my hands. Okay, it, it's it, unless you got some kind of hand fetish. Most people don't consider this is a, a sexual thing. Okay, I don't have to cover my hands. But you do have to cover your parts of your body that are uh, offensive. offensive, or it needs to be. You need to be modest. They're more yeah. sensitive and things like this. Well, we cover those parts. Well, same way in the body. Um, there's some parts that's going to be out front. People's going to see it. They're doing the work, and then there's some parts of the body that are still doing work. Still, still has a just as important job, but yeah. they're hidden. They're in the back. <laughs> They are, these are equal. You can't have this without this, and you can't have this without that. All right? That, so, uh, you know, you, you've met people like this. They want to be out there. They, they're always, uh, I'm going to be on top. I'm better than. I, I'm going to, you know, all this. It don't matter. It, I mean, it, it does matter in the way that if you put yourself in a position, one of the worst things a church can do is take somebody and put them without any kind of rules and just say, uh, you know, I feel like I want to be a uh, uh, women's minister or something. I don't know, whatever, whatever you take it. And you just take them and throw them in there unsupervised. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy, okay? So what, when I say supervised, not that we're children, but, you know, we have a responsibility to answer to God. Yeah. And so whoever we put in a position... I'm going to answer for it. Uh, you know, did I pray? Uh, the Bible says, lay not selling your hands on no man. And that doesn't mean like, uh, you know, if you've got a demon, I touch you, the demon's going to jump on me. That's, that's the Pentecostal holiness kind of thought process. That's not what it means. It means don't take someone, lay your hands on them and put them in a position. They need to prove themselves. You need to know who they are. You need to see are their gifts conducive to that calling right and so that's what it means so um <clears throat> so when you see this i need to be better than i need to be a, a superior person all the time in every whatever every situation that strife that will break a church up jealousy we understand so now there's i didn't put this on there i, I probably should have <clears throat> there's a good jealousy and there's a bad jealousy Okay. I'm jealous over my wife. I, I don't want another man laying his hands on my wife. <laughs> I don't want anybody laying their hands on my child. Uh, or, or, or whatever. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But but then there's a, a another side of that jealousy where i got to know everything she's doing because I'm so jealous and I'm so that. Whatever. That's a, that's a life in hell on earth right there. Yeah. Okay? <clears throat> yeah. If I can't trust you like that, might as well name Abby. Uh, fits of anger, we went over that. Being angry is wrong, not wrong. Uh, even when you're angry and you do sin, for, ask God to forgive us. Get, your, get yourself back into line. Uh, but this is, remember, this is a fruit. This is a building process to where now this is who you are. This is what you produce. When people look at you, they look at you as that's an angry person. Yeah. 
They're angry all the time. Not just every once in a while. Right? So this is a tree that has produced a fruit, you can see. And so remember about all these, all right? <clears throat> Rivalries, the state of being in a rival. Uh, uh, that's why I don't like, this. one of the reasons, the softball thing in churches, the, uh, you know, a bunch of men get together and they're like, oh, it's men's fellowship. Okay, well, you don't represent Jesus on the field. This is just rivalry. This is just, uh, it, it's a, something we shouldn't have to worry about. Where could rivalries be? Um, it could be a good thing where we say, all right, the guys are going to do this. We're going to have a game. The guys are going to do this. We're going to try to sell some stuff. The ladies going to get together and y'all going to try to sell some stuff. Okay? Now, in itself, that's not harmful. That's okay. That's, you know, uh, uh, but when there will come a point in time where somebody can get their feelings on their shoulders and all of a sudden uh, it can turn into sabotaging the men or the men sabotaging the women. I mean, it can go as far as crazy as you want it to go. Yeah. When, when you don't have limits on it, it can go crazy. So these are things that uh, uh, in the church, uh, you know, as teenagers and stuff, you know, you're playing video, I mean, not video games, but you're playing sports and in, in school and stuff like that. Uh, you have rivals, but it's different. When you start harming that person or you start laying traps for that person, when you start trying to come up with schemes to get that person to come off of their track that they're in, who does that sound like? Sounds like the devil, don't it? Yeah, yeah. That's his schemes. Okay? All right? Dissensions. Continuous quarreling. At some point in time, we're going to have discussion. We're going to come up with something that we need to get done. All right? And I'm just going, I'm going to pick it out. You might not like it. You like it. You like it. You don't like it. You don't like it. And you don't like it. And I don't care. Okay? All right. And I don't care. As first as adults, but then as brothers and sisters in the Lord, we're going to have to come together in peace and disagree in, in, in peace and respect and in love and try to find the will of God. Yes. Okay? Well, if you say, well, <clears throat> well, I know my thing will work. Well, so does she. And so does he. Well, we're going to see what God wants. Okay? And if we can pick one of one of them and do it, whatever, there will have to be a decision made. Or we're just spinning our wheels, okay? So a continuous quarreling, uh, uh, fighting amongst ourselves about things all the time, people can be that way in their self. You can't ever please them. You've met people yeah, like yeah. this. They just yeah. always want to fuss, always want to disagree with you. Hey, I agree with you. Well, I don't like that anymore. Right. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, that's the fruit of the flesh. Yeah. Okay? And it also, and that's here again, my first stop, my first sight is the church first, the, the child of God, and then the world that we deal with. Okay? <clears throat> so, these are the fruits of the flesh. So, uh, uh, divisions, you know, that's cliques. You just might as well put that down as a click. Okay? But a division, we're not in the same page. Okay? We're not in the same page. We're, we're to be yoked with Christ. And, and when I say we, not only individually yoked as Christ, but as a body of believers. Yes. <laughs> you can't separate the two, right? And so uh, there, there are going to be things that some of us don't agree with. Some things that, you know what happens, what you've got to do is, I don't agree with it, but we pray the authority uh, has said we're going to do it this way. What do I do now, even though I don't agree with it? Unless it's sin. I'm not talking about, we're talking about like what we're going to paint the color of the walls or, uh, uh, you know, this or that or, you know, what kind of ministry, you know, as long as it's not sin. Sin, this breaks the rules of that, okay? That's, that's more than that. And so um, what you do is you say, okay, Lord, you know how I feel. And then, but you give your heart to it and you just do the very best out of it and don't run your mouth. You know, well, I, I agree, but I don't want you. Yeah. Now, now, look. You're welcome. We're not going to have booger green walls, okay? We're, or or any other color that's 
<laughs> crazy colors, okay? We're just not going to do that. Um, there's a couple reasons why, okay? It won't go with our gold chairs. It won't go with our gold chairs. That's right. Or, or any other color, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, Willy Wonka lives here. He goes to church here. Yeah, this is Willy Wonka's church. I think that was a bad mix at Lowe's or something. That, that yeah. Sure yeah. yeah. And, and that can do well, that. Okay. Five, five bucks for a gallon now. You might, it was probably you a mix that they yeah. got on sale because somebody else bought somebody it back. Somebody bought it. it. <laughs> 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 she was out there with the yellow tag on it. Clear. Maybe. <laughs> Yeah. But uh, <laughs> so so these these quarrelings are going to happen in church, but we're, we have to remember who we are under in Christ, and come together as a family and make a decision with the, with a safety of a multitude of counsel, safety in a multitude of counsel. We we're going to bring it before the Lord. None of us is dumb in here. We're going to put our smart minds to it. And we're going to make the very best decision, not being God, but letting God lead us. Okay? Yeah. And so, uh, that. Divisions, same thing. Envying. Uh, envying. I, you know, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, Steph and I know a, know a couple. And these couples, we went to some party with them or something, some Christmas work party. And these couple, they are just, everybody's, chatting about their, you know, there are cliques there and stuff like that, and everybody's happy being nice to one another, but this couple just come in, man, and they just, like, float. They are so chill. They are just cool, laid back. They're just, you just feel at peace with them. I'm like, and I look at that, and I say, man, you put me in a room with a bunch of people, man, I'm like a cat walking on water. I'm like, I can feel everybody breathe. I know everybody's in here. And I'm having the whole time, calm yourself down, you know, stay focused and all this stuff. And uh, I just, I, I envy that. I wished I could be like that. I just wished I could just float in a room, man. It don't matter. Just people I don't know. And you know, just be just out there. It'd be great. I wished I could be like that. That is not what this is talking That is a form of envy, okay? <laughs> envy is a painful or resentful awareness of the advantage enjoyed uh, enjoyed by another joined with a desire to possess the same advantage. Now we see that all the time. Yes. All right, especially the white and black issue. Okay, uh, in being in church, I've seen it before where a, a guy or girls, a guy, a lady or whatever, has been fasting and hungering after God, reading scripture together, talking about it. So, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to give y'all a clue. You are spiritually going to grow. Uh -uh. <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> Believe it or not. You are sowing that seed. You're watering it. You're shading it. You're singing, singing to it. I mean, it's going to grow. Right? And there's going to be a point to where there's going to start being fruit being seen by. You cannot take or break that rule. Every one of us is bound by that. You cannot. You can't. And so what will inevitably happen is you'll have brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so who thinks that, I mean, 20 years ago, they did the same thing. God spoke to them. Uh, they worked in, in their gifts. They were thought of really high up there, okay? And then all of a sudden, they, they began to think that they got comfortable and believed and started thinking that that was all them. Okay? They got to the point, they got to the place 20 years ago where God could use them. And they were used. But since then, they stopped. But see, they're still holding on to that. And then they'll see y'all grow. And they'll become envious of you. Envious. They'll, they'll start, you know, oh, they think they're better. Now look at them coming in here thinking they do this for a book. It ain't your problem. Y'all ain't doing nothing but seeking God. But brother, sister, so-and-so that quit doing it 20 years ago, well, then it's their problem. God will use y'all's growth to reflect the slackness and sin in their life. Believe me, he'll do that. Okay? He will do that. He will do that. And so, envying, man, I wish I could be, like I said, more laid back. I really do. I wish I could be more laid back. I wish I could be a lot of different things. Uh, but I'm glad that there's, they are like that. I just would, I'd like to change that in myself. 
but not to the plate where I resent them or I hate them for it. But it will definitely take hold in church because remember, you do have an adversary who is looking, actively looking, yeah. not laying in the corner when prey comes over there, he jumps on it. He's roaming, looking, and he loves to come to church because he hates us the most. Yes. Yeah. You know? I mean, he hates God the most, but like I said Sunday, he can't hurt God, but he can hurt the things that God loves. Yes. Okay? Envy. Drunkenness. Now look, I'm Pentecostal. I believe in a, a, a holy lifestyle. Okay? Jesus drank wine. You can have, except for an alcoholic, yeah. if God delivered you from alcohol, don't drink. <laughs> if you know God delivered your brother or sister from alcohol, don't drink around them. Period. Because if you cause them to relapse, God's going to hold you accountable. You see what I'm saying? So, but this is taught. We're talking about fruit now. This fruit went through the growth process. Being a drunk all the time, I used to have somebody tell me, "Well, God, the Bible says take a little, little, uh, little wine for your ailments, for your belly's sake." I'm like. Buddy, you don't, <laughs> my gosh. <laughs> you passing out with two beers in your hands and, and one between your legs. Yes. And that's a little bit for your ailments? Come on. <laughs> right. So don't be in that state. Don't, don't be in that state. So having a beer, uh, if you're not around your brother or sister, you know, don't let your liberties become sin for somebody else, a father. Okay? That's what that means. All right? All right. Of course, orgies. I don't really need to say a whole lot more about that. Okay? No. I don't need to spend a bunch of time on that one. Okay, we got that. I'm sorry, Pastor. I, I don't think I understand. Okay. All right. Let, I, I will say this, though. Number 16, things like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, read ahead. Look, though. In the in the first century though, in the first century, um, uh, these agnostic or Christians, some of these Christians that were that were um, deacons, that were ministers, preachers, they started to uh, get into the uh, agnostic kind of belief, the esoteric stuff, and and they you know some of them started believing, hey, love's love, and uh, uh, if you want to have sex with my wife, then. You go ahead and do it because if I deny that, then I don't really truly love you. And she don't mind it. And who's hurting what? Right? And they and they were doing it. Why do you think he put it in here? Because there were Christians that was falling into this trap. Because we're just people in this body. We do have the Holy Spirit in us telling us, hey, don't do this. And for our mind today, man, saying orgy is just it's crazy. But we don't give the enemy a foothold. And that's, that's why I even I want to spend any time on it. Because it was happening in the church. And uh, the, the church fathers, uh, the ones in the first century, they had the war against this. You know, here, here's, a say, a new believer. They're still dealing, or, or uh, somebody's been a Christian for a while, for a little while. Here they are. They're dealing with all this stuff, with their normal life, their normal passions, normal desires that we all deal with, Right? And then here you have a group that was your in your church saying, hey, man, come over here. This or Look, you can have sex with all the women you want. And this pastor, this preacher who you know says it's okay. God's all right. What's love? Don't you love people? We're commanded to love people, right? And these people were saying, well, I mean, yeah. And, you know, and I mean, you get a young person or a person that, you know, uh, absolutely, it's a big draw. It was a draw, and it, it leads people straight. And so, uh, yeah. And then 16 things like that, like this. <laughs> and that's what he put. Think, well, I think he did. Things like, anyway, and things like this. Uh, yeah, so on and so forth. That's the kind of so things. So yeah. Okay. Uh, it's, it's really easy, if you're looking, it's really easy to see the fruits of the flesh poking out their ugly heads. Yes. You know, yes. it, it is. Because one, we do have the Holy Spirit in us and when we do, or even before we sin, you know, 
just like I do, you get that feeling, don't do it. Yeah. You know you do, and I do too, okay? That's the Holy Spirit, yes. okay? That's not you being a good, good person. That's the Holy Spirit. What makes you good is to Jesus and then not doing what the... You know, what your flesh says and doing what the Holy Spirit says. Okay? And so, um, let me see. Drunken ass in verse 22, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. Gentleness, self-control, against such there is no law. Like we said earlier, if everybody did the first fruits of the Spirit, 100%, 100%, there would be no reason for laws, That's civil laws. There would be no no, no reason for them, right. okay? Because the law's not for you because you're going to obey. With, you're going to have those, okay? He says, and, uh, and those who belong to Christ Jesus has crucified, crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. We crucify the flesh, something dies on the cross, okay? And you will need to keep make sure that thing stays crucified and it don't get off the, that cross that you put it on and pick it up. All right. He says, if we live by the Spirit, see that if? It's not a guaranteed thing. Right. All right. If, if we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. You mean I just don't get to do what I want to? Huh. Not if you want to keep in with the Spirit? If you do what you wanted to do, we would be having fruits of the flesh come about. Amen. It's just that simple, y'all. Look, I know, I know people will make it complicated and they will put all these big $25 words in it and, and all these stuff you got to look up, but that is as simple as it is. That is as simple as it is. Um, if you keep in step with the Spirit, the Spirit will not lead you to sin against God. Because God can't sin. God can't sin. He can't be tempted to sin. So if the Spirit is leading you, you will do what's right, whether you know what to do or not. And uh, first, first the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, he is, to, he is to remind us of all the works of Christ. Okay, He is to lead us into all paths of truth. All right? Truth. Then, then He's our minister. He's our healer. He's our, you know, uh, He gives us our wisdom, knowledge, and so on and so forth. And so, if we keep in step with Him, we will do the things that please God. And those spiritual seeds are sowed, and all of a sudden you will start seeing, people will start seeing spiritual fruit. Like if you would walk up to an apple tree out in the yard, you'd say, that's an apple tree. That's not a, unless you've never seen an apple tree or nothing, you just crawled out of a rock. You know, you can't say, that's a strawberry tree. Okay? No, man, that's an apple. An apple. So uh, you'll be able to see it. Right, and so will everyone else. It says, let us not be con- uh, become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. This especially is in the church, but it definitely is out in the world. We're not to provoke. Uh, people going to be people are going to be offended anyway. People can be provoked. People can have envy. You can't stop somebody from having envy towards you. Uh, they, you know. Uh, <coughs> People can be conceited, but you control whether you can. You will be conceited, okay? So you can't help what other people think. Yeah. The the people in the world that will look at you and say, like I was talking about earlier, y'all hungering after the Lord, and somebody in the church over there saying, look, then they think they're better than everybody else. And y'all, that's not even coming to your mind. Y'all are humbling yourselves and, and trying to learn God's Word. Learning God's Word. The problem is them. You're doing the right thing. But it don't stop that person from doing it. So you can't stop that. So I want to get that crossed you. I want to get it so that when you're hungering after God, the enemy will come and say, maybe you need to stop a little bit. You're, you're hurting their feelings. You, do you think you're better than everybody else? Do you, maybe you think you are. Maybe you just think you're a holy roller, Bible thumper, blah, 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 blah. You will have to sort these things out in your head. And then you have to see in yourself, well, do I think I'm conceited? Right? Do I think that I'm better than everyone else? You have to judge yourself. You have to take envy, uh, 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 stock of you. Look at you. 
right? Examine your, the Bible says to examine yourself. When those times come and other times, you are to examine your walk. It, right now, how's my walk with the Lord? And don't lie to yourself because you're not hurting anybody but yourself. Right. Take an honest to God look at your life and say, the answer will always be I can do better. Duh. <laughs> that will always be there. Okay? You can always do better. But within reason are you growing. <laughs> okay? You can always grow. So, uh, uh, but just, just remember that so that when that trial comes in your head, you'll realize, well, let's take stock. Do I think I'm better than so-and-so? If their feelings are hurt, man, I'm going to pray and I'm going to ask them, you know, I, I will do what I can to Show them maybe I'm, I don't think I'm better than anybody. I just hungry after God. Okay? Don't let the devil uh, stifle your growth, growth from that. So the fruits, well, the fruit is love. Okay? The first fruit of love. We talked earlier about murder. Okay? And when we look and we say, we hate the sin, but we love the sinner. The reason I love the sinner is not because I'm just such a good guy. It's because I've been shown love. The Holy Spirit has produced that fruit in me so that I can say, we hate the sin, but I love you. I want you to go to heaven. It is not God's will that any should perish, but all should come to salvation in Christ Jesus. Okay? They might have done everything they did to deserve what they got. Okay? But so did I. And I am no better than them. I, I might have made better decisions, you know, at some point in time. Eventually, I've accepted Christ. But we've got to understand that I was, might not be doing exactly what they were doing, but I was still on the other side. And it was just as bad. So, uh, so this love, this love is probably one of the first ones, I think. Or, or it could be, depending on the person. But this fruit of love, loving the unlovable, loving the ones that say we're dumb, say we're this or that, you have to love them. Why? Because Christ loves them. That doesn't mean we, we, we hear them and do everything they say just so we can just show them the love and we do what other churches are doing. They love so much that they push Jesus and his word out of the way. That that love is so great that you have that you that it supersedes God's love. Because God loves gives us boundaries. Yeah. Right? And that's what happens. Right? Joy. Joy. Um, the fruit of joy, you know, it's... Uh, joy is... I don't know, I've never... Maybe you can live your life all the time full of joy. I have joy in the Lord knowing that I'm going to go to heaven, knowing that I have a God I can run, and run to, right? Because if I was just walking around like my mind was messed up and all I, you know, I'm, I'm so high up on this mountain all the time, all the time, guess what? That mountain will all of a sudden will become my God. It will become, uh, I need that valley to remind me of how deep I've fallen to get closer back to the Lord. That valley is as important as the mountaintop. Right? The reason I'm saved is because I was confronted face to face with my sin and the need for a Savior. If I didn't have that, I would still be ignorant, dumb, and probably a witch doctor, some a root doctor. I don't know. I've been something. A root, a root doctor. Okay? But that, that, that joy, you can have that, that joy in your heart even when things are going around crazy. But you have to cultivate these things. These things are not just going to... God is certainly going to help you. 100% because we can't do this without God. Remember, we're trying to walk in the Spirit. And without the Spirit, you're not going to do these things. You're not going to. I won't either. <laughs> so, peace. I always say, peace that passes understanding. I love that word. I love the way that's put. What passes the understanding. I know what peace means. But my, when my outside circumstances dictates that I should not have peace in my heart, uh, that's the peace that passes understanding. That's beyond me. I'm sober-minded. But I have peace in my heart. Yeah, there's bad things going around, battle, around with me. I got 
things going on, so on and so forth. But I'm at peace with God. Scripture says if you're at peace with God, He will make even your enemies at peace with you. Yeah. Word. <laughs> <laughs> Amen to that. Amen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Patience. Okay, we know about patience. Uh, ask for patience. Seek patience. Don't be afraid to ask God for patience because it is a fruit of the Spirit. Is anything on this list do you think it's bad to ask God for if it's from the Spirit? No. no. Silly, ain't it? Yeah. When you just lay it down like, that's silly. I asked the Lord patience one time. You had Hannah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Did you give me Hannah. <laughs> and I'm struggling with her. That's right. You have not because you asked not. <laughs> You asked, and he said, okie dokie. <laughs> okie dokie. <laughs> Poor Hannah. Hannah's sweet. I don't have to live with her, but I love her. <laughs> Kindness. Yeah, she's getting better. Kindness. Okay. This is, uh, man, when you're out here with these fruits, you will shine. You don't have to, do you know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, to everybody you meet? If you just have these coming. Remember, when I say you can see it on the tree, yeah. that's how it is that people can see it. Yeah. They won't be hiding this. You can't hide the city under a bushel, bushel, right? You can't hide or on the top of the mountain, right? You can't hide that light under a bushel. It's going to come out and show. Or you're not going to be following in step with the Spirit. Okay? All right, so kindness. This is, this is wonderful. So let this thing, everybody can be kind, but it's being kind in your nature that's who you are. Okay? Goodness, all right? Goodness, doing just, just good things. Good things, just having a, uh, I, I, you know, having a, I always throw up a wall, and I always think, not the worst of people. I don't think that. I have hope for people. But it's like I'm paranoid a little bit. I need to see you for a little bit. Maybe. Huh? Maybe. Well, I, I just need to see when somebody comes, like my, when somebody comes in and says, uh, for example, we had an altar call one time at a church I was at. And it was, it was an altar call or a, a word from the Lord. It was uh, for the, the men of the church is going to gather up around, basically I'm paraphrasing, going to gather up around and undergird the church be strong a stronger core okay we had this new this guy I've never seen before in a day in my life visiting our church and it was specific to our church it wasn't just in church in general he came up and i said that's a lot that's a lot you ain't who are you where was you out when we've been digging these ditches? Where was you out when we lay out the chairs? Where was you out and praying in the middle of the night? <laughs> Boy, it's easy to, you know, backseat drive. Mm -hmm. Right? So, so I always get that in, in my head. That's how I think. Now, I might say something different, which I didn't call him a liar. Right? But I knew it was a lie. <laughs> right? So, uh, you know, um, uh, maybe it's mercy I need to work on. We'll, we'll work on that. Either way, let God lead. But goodness, uh, good things. You know, goodness can be, well, I don't want to get all cheesy and stuff. But looking at the beauty of a painting, right? The, the, the thing that God created that created something else, a beautiful painting, okay? And when you look at it, you're like, why is this so pleasing to me? Why? You ever seen that? You know, you look at your kids, you can just beat your kids to death almost. Yeah. But you look at them, you're just like, if you start really thinking about them, you're just like, man, I know there's God. That's awesome. That's incredible. That's good. That is goodness, right? These are good. This is that salt and light. When you put salt on a bland piece of meat, it makes it better. That is goodness, okay? Uh, <clears throat> faithfulness. Faithfulness went hard. Y'all are... Uh, fruits of the Spirit have certainly come out in our church in, in faithfulness. Y'all are faithful, right? You come, everybody's work, you come. Uh, you're faithful to the Lord, you're faithful to the church, you're faithful to one another, all right? So, uh, 
and you're faithful to your your word. Okay, so that's certainly in the out. And you know, so is goodness, so is kindness, and patience. Y'all are patient with me. Okay, these fruits are at different stages in your life. <laughs> okay, uh, gentleness. I really have to work on this one myself personally. Okay, gentleness, because I, I tend to be harsh if y'all haven't noticed mm -hmm. and uh but um but my heart breaks so for for things you know um self-control another self-control self-control we get it mixed up when we say self-control when i feel like i want to do something and i don't see we tend to think we tend to put more focus on me wanting to do it and forget the fact that I totally didn't do what was wrong. <laughs> right? Don't we? Yeah. We feel guilty. Like, man, I, man. Felt that way. <sighs> and let me tell you, because I, I was called by a loved one. I was called fat the other day. I was called fat the other day. Eating food at my table. And what I didn't do was what I wanted to do. <laughs> That was self-control. That's the fruit of self-control. But boy, did I want to. It hurt my feelings, you know. It hurt my feelings. I know I'm fat, but you ain't got to tell me. It ain't going to make me lose weight any better. Right? That's cool. That's fine. So, th so these fruits here. Uh, in verse, um, we'll keep going, and we'll finish this up. In Galatians 5 and 12, it says, Now, when y'all think I'm too hard, let's listen to our brother Paul. I wish those who unsettle you would emasculate themselves. Now, do you need me to tell you what that means? <laughs> to cut off their genitals. Maybe I'm not that harsh. I need Stephanie to read this. <laughs> she says I say stupid too much. I'm like, but you're stupid. <laughs> yeah, to emasculate themselves, okay? This is Paul. Okay? Because the love that he has for God's people and the love that God has for these people, the people that was leading, they turned their back on Christ and was leading new believers and other believers into orgies, so on and so forth, right? Junk, drunkenness, parties. All these people, it would be better so for them to emasculate themselves than to destroy the child of God and destroy themselves. Jesus said what? It would be better if your eye offends you to pluck it out and make it to heaven. It would be better to cut off your hand and make it to heaven. So it would be better for you to... Jesus said, quit. Now, don't do this, okay? He's saying, though, if it was between you going to heaven or hell, missing limbs not even, don't even come close to it. It would be worth it to give it up. If it was going to guarantee you to make it to heaven. That's how serious God is about it. And really, that's how serious we should be about it. So when Paul says, I wish that those that would lead you astray would emasculate yourself, you just remember that when you think, Pastor Kane's been a little harsh today. <laughs> I've never said that, okay? He says, <laughs> he says, for you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedoms as an opportunity uh, for the flesh, but through love serve one another. This is the whole thing about the drinking thing. Using my freedom to be able to drink right. or, you know, something like that. If I know that it's going to cause a brother that's been delivered from alcoholism, uh, then I'm not, then that's using my freedom to hurt them. Mm -hmm. Then I'm not going to drink around them. That don't mean you don't have to quit, you know, take a, a drink or whatever here, whatever, uh, here or there, not here in church. Don't do that, okay? <laughs> uh, <laughs> or, what did I say? Or things like these, okay? Things like this. Don't do these right here. It says, brother, you know, don't use this for an opportunity to flesh, but through love, through what? Through love. Through real love. Through love, serve one another, okay? For the whole law is fulfilled in one thing. You shall love your neighbor as yourself, okay? That here again, like Roby and I were talking, your neighbor... Is not your brother. Okay? They're not in the same kingdom. But we're supposed to love them as we love ourselves. What I would do for myself, I should do for my neighbor. For everybody. 
Um, and that's how come it says all the, the whole law could be fulfilled in this. If we just loved it, the whole world could love one another like we love ourselves. If you need mercy, then I need to say, well, I need to give you mercy like I'd want to have mercy. The golden rule, right? Mm -hmm. Right, the golden yeah. rule. Then that, 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 all the law, all the necessities for laws would be abolished mm -hmm. if that one thing was to happen. So then our brothers, we're even to esteem higher. He says, but if you buy... Now he's being sarcastic. So he's telling these people to emasculate themselves. Now he's being a little sarcastic. He says, but if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. So if, if you're one of... Not you, but I'm saying this for future references. If you're one of these people that always cause strife, always cause division always negative Nancy or, or negative Nan, the Dan or whoever, and, and, and you're causing all these issues, okay? You're biting people. You're biting, you're consuming, you're, look at them thinking, they're blah, 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 blah. Guess what? You're going to get consumed. Somebody, it's going to happen to you. We're, remember, we're talking about fruit growing. Right. We're talking about sowing the for real seed and we're reaping a harvest from that. Whatever you sow, therefore you shall reap. And so if you're always running your mouth, you're always negative, you're, always, you're going to reap these things. You are going to, so when I say positive thinking, we're not talking about positive thinking like the gurus of today, right? Yeah. I'm on positive thinking. I've got a Mercedes Benz, and one day I'm going to see it out in my yard, okay? It might be coming through your house or hitting your tree, but that positive thinking is not going to have one out there with a tree. I saw on a ship out in Atlanta, yeah, there you go. There you go. God was, did that to show, teach you something. Back. It's oh. funny because, yeah, there was, a, there was a, yeah. a ship that actually sunk a day with German cars on it, oh. luxury cars. Man. So if, if, you do, if you bite, if you're against one another, you're going to be devoured by that. You, you're not going to be able to escape it. Not, uh, not just us, but people in the world. People in the world. You... you just real quick, and we'll be done. You ever seen these people that, I hate to use this example, but it's the best example I can come up with. You, you have this lady, and this is not right. This is not right. I, I say it's wrong 100%. I would not have patience, kindness, gentleness, uh, joy, love, or peace as I'm pounding somebody's guts for doing this. But somebody that a, a woman gets in a relationship, I'm not talking about one time or something, an off thing. Or a man, woman or man, get in a relationship and they have an abusive spouse or abusive person, okay? They finally get away from that person. I don't want to say I'm blaming the victim, okay, because it can happen to anybody, all right? But then they, they get in another relationship and all of a sudden they have the same thing happen. They get in another relationship and all of a sudden that happens again. Other relationship, and it just keeps on. It's a perpetual thing. There is some certain uh, uh, similarities here. First, the devil's going to bring people like that to you, because it's like uh, uh, little kids that are abused. Okay, little kids that are abused. It, uh, it's they tend to be abused by other people too. All right. It's, it's not just a, a natural thing. It is a spiritual thing. Yes. It is definitely 100% a spiritual thing. Because how could I be uh, drawn to that as a person? I'm just saying as an example. How could I be drawn if, if there was a woman who had been abused and I'm an abuser? One, I'm looking for that probably, but, but I can, you can just sense it. You can, you can tell it off the way they move, the way they talk. The, there's something that draws you to that. It's a spiritual thing. And when you become a new creature in Christ Jesus, those spiritual things are broken. Now, you can fall back into those certain things, okay? But they are broken. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus. So when the devil comes up and says, hey... You know, or you see it say, I'm a, a, a female. I'm not identifying as a female right now. I'm a man, but we're going to play a part. You know, this guy and I've been abused my last 14 uh, relationships. I've been beat. And I see this guy, whatever, and now I'm a Christian. I need to say, we need to check with Jesus. 
We need to see who this guy is. We need to check with things, right? And then guess what? The Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you. So that verse 15, it is another warning for reaping or sowing and reaping. So when you sow good things from the Spirit, you will receive and grow a good harvest, spiritual harvest. When you sow things in the flesh, you are going to sow and reap things from the flesh. It's just that simple. And it don't matter who your grandma was, how much you say you love Jesus, whatever the case may be, you're going to reap it. Okay. Now God can intervene and, and make the, the hit not as hard, which He is full of mercy and grace. And I'm not saying He won't do it, but it can happen. Okay. So next week, um, we will hopefully come to the conclusion of this thing, and I'm going to give you all, a, not a test, but a, a, a little something so that you can work your gifts in and try to um, grow spiritually. How about that? Sounds good, Don. Good. good. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So we're going to pray. I've got, uh, real quick, uh, my uncle's sick in the hospital. Uh, I, I need y'all's prayer. He is like the third child. Fourth child. He's the fourth child. And we just had the old, eldest uncle die this year. My daddy's all tore up and everything. And Plus, I don't want him to die, but then if he was to pass, I just don't know. My grandma died. My His best friend, his oldest brother died. And then he's super close to this brother. They're all close, but he would be the next one. Uh, my daddy's been sick. I just... Uh, it'd be rough. But please, well, we're going to pray for that. Anybody got anything real quick? What, what is his name, your uncle? Uh, his name's Chris. Chris? Yeah, Chris Wilson. Uh, I tell you, I'm starting to see... Man, my grandma passed away, and then it's like she was staving off things. God God didn't let certain things happen while she was here. And she's gone. And it's like my family don't have that. It's like God was building a hedge, mm-hmm. and the hedge is not there. That's what it seems like. That's what it seems like. So, uh, <clears throat> but anyway, anybody else? Okay. Um, Tammy Gibson, she's the woman that just lost her husband. And they were married 41 years, and she mm. is struggling. Oh, yeah. And her, her kids, and they, she's got two kids, and they were all kind of, you know, taking it really bad. Yeah. So she asked for, for a prayer. She's, <laughs> and you know, he was a pastor of a church, and they'd been a pastor there for a long time. The same church, and the love of the people was, is there going to be there for her, but yeah. It's still going to be really hard. Oh, yeah. It's still going to be lost. <laughs> That's horrible. I, I pass the pieces of understanding. That's the, <laughs> we can understand certain things, can't we? But, man, when it gets like that, mm-hmm. it's only God. Only God. Well, um, let's pray real quick. Father, thank you for tonight, Lord. I, I thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you for your mercy and your grace, your kindness. Lord, I thank you for the faithfulness of this church. Father, I thank you for the growth of spiritual fruit in us, Father. And God, I pray that you'll destroy any kind of spiritual, uh, or excuse me, any kind of uh, uh, fruits of the flesh in us. Keep us from evil. Keep us from the evil one, Lord. Cause us to seek you and to hunger for you to want to know the truth of your word. Because when we get in your word, God, there's nothing but strength. There's nothing, there is peace. There is comfort. There's assurance in knowing what your word says, God. I can run, I can read your word, God, and I can be comforted by it. I can get in your presence and in the name of Jesus, God, you can comfort me, help me, and you can be my strength, God. You are the very best thing that's ever happened to us, Lord. And we love you for it, Father. God, I, I pray this for our sister that has lost her husband, Father. I don't need, I, I can't even understand it. Lord, I, I can't even start to begin to imagine what she's going through. 
but God, you do. You know. Lord, and we lift her up to you. You're the only one that can give peace. You're the only one that can minister to her the way she needs it, Father. I know there's going to be people that love her and they're going to try God. And I pray that through their works, Lord, that you would use them and bless them. <coughs> use them to bless their sister, Father. But God, it's only through your hand and might and power and your gentleness and your love, God, can she even make it through this. Lord, we lift her up to you, God, and we just bind peace to her in the name of Jesus in her mind, God, we speak it. Father, just let her have just peace in your presence, God. Keep her together, Lord. Father, I pray for Chris. I lay him up before you, Father. Lord, I pray that you would make sure his heart is right, Lord. I know he's a Christian, Father, but he's backslidden some, Lord, and, and so on, God. You know his life, Lord. First, God, touch his heart. Minister grace and mercy to him, God. Open up his eyes. Open up his heart, God, to call out to you and repent and come back to you, Father. And I pray that you would heal his body, that you would heal him and just keep him safe. Father, and help my father not to be so tore up, God. I know he's sick, and God, this can, in a sickened state, Father, he could just, he's been in the hospital several times, you know, Father. I pray that you give him strength and encourage him, God. And, and, and Father, just cause him to pray for Chris also. Let use this thing to draw Daddy closer to you. And I thank you, Father. I thank you for listening. All the prayers that are in our heart, all the things, God, that we haven't mentioned tonight, Father. Lord, we know you know them better than we can explain them. God, and you know how to fix them better than we can ask how to fix them. Father, do those things, Father, please, in the name of Jesus. Let the name of Jesus be lifted up. Let the Son of God be glorified in these people in lives and in situations. That your name would be proclaimed, Lord, throughout the whole world. And we praise you and we glorify you, Father. Build this church up, Father, for your glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs>